Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Today we're looking at a data set of cereals, uh, 80 cereals to be exact. So it's nutrition data on 80 cereal products, and we're going to try to predict the rating of a given cereal. So let me get all the columns here. You can see at the end we have this rating uh, category, which is basically seems like a rating uh, from 0 to 100. And uh, we're going to use all these different uh, features to try to predict it. Uh, so let's get started. Um, I have the task for today, given data about different breakfast cereals, let's try to predict the rating of a given cereal. And we will use linear regression uh, to make our predictions. So uh, I have some imports here, uh, NumPy and Pandas, pretty standard. And then for pre-processing, I'm going to use the standard scalar and train test split function from sklearn. And for our actual model, we'll use linear regression, and I'm also going to include uh, variants of linear regression with regularization, so we can see how regularization affects the performance of our model. So I'll go ahead and import that, and then we can load in the data using uh, pandas read CSV function. And we get the file path right over here, copy file path, paste it in, and we can take a look. All right, so here's the data. And basically, um, okay, so let's get some info on it, data.info. Uh, you can see, well, this is very helpful. Um, we have 77 rows, and this says 77 non-nulls in each uh, column. However, I notice that there's a negative one here, and that immediately makes me realize, well, it looks like uh, nulls were encoded as negative one. So, uh, if I, okay, let's get into pre-processing. I'm gonna uh, see, okay, so how many of the values uh, are equal to negative one in each column? So I'm gonna sum over, here notice if I don't sum, it'll look like this. It's just gonna check each value um, to see if it's negative one. And then I can sum over the rows to get the number of negative ones in each column. And it looks like we don't have that many. We have two in potassium, one in sugar, one in carbohydrates. Now since we have uh, such so few, uh, and because we only have 77 rows, we definitely don't want to drop training examples. Uh, we definitely want to try to impute these values using the means of the corresponding columns. So here why don't I do this. Uh, missing values and we will okay so what I want to do is first I'm going to convert negative ones to null values and, and numpy nan values and um, it's important to before we do that to make sure that these are only in numerical columns so carbo sugars and potass these are all numerical columns so there will be no problem filling in uh, the null values with the means of those columns. So what we'll do is, uh, so, okay, data, let's see, how. what's the best way to do this? We can just do data.replace. This will replace any occurrence of a given value with another value. So anytime we see negative one, and we can do this because we know negative one only shows up in numerical columns, we're gonna replace negative one with numpy.nan. So we're going to make that the new data. And now if we check uh, data.isna, which is going to check how many uh, null values we have, if we sum across the rows, we'll get the number of null values in each column. Uh, you can see where we had negative ones before, we now have null values. And the reason I changed it to as na is because now we can say data.fillna. Uh, so this allows us to fill all the null values with a new value. And so what I want to do is not fill all of them with the same value, but instead iterate through the columns that we need to do. So it's carbo, sugars, and potass. So carbo, sugars, potass. Uh, for each of those columns, we're going to uh, use fill in a on just that column 
and we're going to pass in the mean of that column. So each, each column will get a different null fill based on the mean of that particular column. And the mean is calculated uh, based on the values that are non-null. If we had left them as negative 1 and tried to uh, uh, convert the negative 1s uh, to the mean, the mean would take into account the negative 1 into the calculation of the mean. So it's important that we replace them with NANs first. Uh, so this fills them in. For each of these columns, it should do the same thing. And we actually have to say data subcolumn equals the, the filled version of it. All right, now if we check the null values, you can see we have zeros. If we sum again, you can see we have total null values are zero. So we're, we're good to go. All right, and one more thing I probably should have done earlier is I want to drop this name column because it's not going to give us any useful information in regards to the rating, um, at least not in its current state, right? There's maybe we could do some natural language processing on it to convert the words into features and then uh, see if, a, if like we have 100% in, in the name, then maybe that increases the rating or something, but uh, we're just going to drop it for our purposes. So data subname. Uh, actually, no, we do data equals data dot drop name and axis one. Okay. So if we look at data now, so we've dealt with the missing values, right? We're going to look at the current state. The missing values have been uh, filled in, and we're now left with uh, just the task of encoding the text values. So what I'll do. Let's make this new uh, section, uh, encoding. And we're going to see, OK, so there's actually only two columns that need encoding. Now, we want to know uh, what are the unique values in these columns. This will affect how we encode. So I'm going to make a uh, dictionary that maps columns to lists of the unique values in the in that column. So we get a column, uh, we get the unique values from that column, and we turn it into a list. And that's for every column in MFR and type. OK, so we can see that MFR takes on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 different values. And type takes on two. And the reason I'm doing this is because if we get a column that takes on only two values, we don't have to use one hot encoding. We can use binary encoding, which is just uh, choose one to be one and choose the other to be zero, and then encode that way. So we'll just do that first on the type column, data subtype. And we can apply a lambda function. It takes in some x, which would be either c or h. And we'll turn x into 1 if x equals h. So I think this stands for cold and hot. And I'm just choosing hot to, to be the positive example. So hot will be 1, cold will be 0. And otherwise, we'll have 0. OK. So that would look like this. It would take these uh, c, 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 turn it to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And anything that's h would become 1. Right? 1 if x equals h. And I'm going to make data subtype that uh, new column. So this will effectively um, convert type to numerical format. Now what's left to do is MFR. And um, I'm just going to, OK. I would normally make a function to one hot encode. But since we're only doing it on a single column, we can probably just uh, write out the code in one block. So. We're going to make a dummies data frame. So this is going to be, so I'll just put a comment, one hot encode the uh, MFR, let's call it MFR, yeah, MFR uh, column. All right, so dummies is going to be pandas.getDummies data sub MFR. 
And so what this does, uh, if I show you what it does, you can see it takes all these unique values in MFR, so A, G, K, N, P, Q, R, all these, and it makes new columns out of them. And then for a given example, let's say 3, 3 had a K for MFR. So now 3 has a 1 for K and a 0 for all the others. So this is what it's doing for all the examples. And we get this dummies matrix, which we'll then store in dummies. And uh, after that, we're going to concatenate data equals pd.concat data and dummies access one. So what this is doing is it's just taking this thing and uh, pasting it onto the end of our data frame. Okay, And then uh, we're going to drop the original column, which is MFR, because we created these dummies from it. And we no longer need the original one. All right, so now if we look at data, we can see that we have this one hot encoded uh, MFR columns, and the original MFR is gone. And what you'll notice is now uh, we have all numeric data. I think this we're only missing a single uh, column here that we can't see. That, that would is, I think it's shelf. That's also numeric, so we don't have to worry. Okay, so we can now split and scale our data. So I'm going to split it into a y and x. Y will be what we're trying to predict. Data dot loc all rows and just the rating column because this is what we want to predict right here. And x is going to be everything except the rating column. Okay. So now x looks like this. It's just everything without rating. And y uh, will be just the ratings. And what I want to do is create a scalar. And this will be the standard scalar that we imported from sklearn. And I'm going to use that scalar to fit and transform x. So it's going to f uh, we're going to fit the scalar to x, um, and then we're going to transform x accordingly. And what the standard scalar does is it uh, takes each column and scales it by so and shifts it so that it has a mean zero and a variance one. And that will be the case for every column. So. Um, it actually returns a NumPy array, and I'd like to continue to visualize it a little better. So I'm going to turn it back into a data frame once the scaling is complete. And I'm going to retain the column names from before. So now if I look at X, you can see the whole thing has been scaled. Uh, so uh, now we're ready to feed it into our model. So it's important that each column takes on a similar range of values. That's why we do the scaling. Okay, and then we're going to split once more into a train and test set. So x train, x test, y train, y test equals train test split x, y with a train size of 70%. And, excuse me, uh, we will have a random state as well of 42. Okay, so random state will just allow us to reproduce the results. This can be any number. All uh, right, so we'll run that. Now we have it split, and we'll begin training. So I'm just going to use sklearn models today. I'm going to get a linear regression model. Then I'm also going to get a L2 model. This is going to be our ridge regression model. And we want to specify the regularization strength here. Uh, it's defaulted to 1.0. And L1 model is going to be our lasso regression, or L1 regularization, uh, which we'll also keep as 1.0 for the regularization strength. So we'll run that. And then we're going to fit all of them. So we can do it this way, L2, L1 click here, 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 and then model.fit x train a uh, y train. Alright, uh, let's train them. I'll just include a little 
little thing at the end. Models trained, there we go. And then uh, I'm going to store their results, which uh, will, will give us the R squared values, basically a measure of how well our uh, fit is, uh, fit to the data, how good our fit is. Um, and we'll use, okay, what I'll do is grab these, paste it, and then here, 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 we'll include uh, R2 for R squared equals model dot score and so we're evaluating it on the test set x test y test this just has to be l2 and this is l1 okay so we've oh no wait okay yeah yeah okay so now we have these values and i'm just going to print out the results so you know i'm just going to copy paste this because uh, basically just printing out r squared scores uh, and then the corresponding ones. So uh, we'll run that, and I realize, okay, that's my bad. This should be R2. I accidentally wrote accuracy in my other notebook. Wow, that's that's better than I expected. Wow, this is 0.99 R2. This is my R squared. This is really good, really good. Um, means we're doing a fantastic job at fitting uh, our regression model. So I'm going to play around with the regularization constants a little and try to see if we can get some better results. I notice that um, the ridge regression is actually doing slightly better than the regression without regularization, but the last regression is significantly hindering our performance. So let, let's try putting less regularization on the lasso. So 0.1 instead. And let's try putting a little more on the ridge. And, okay, the putting the more on the ridge actually brought our performance down, so let's not. Let's try putting less, even. And that also brought our performance down. So it looks like 1.0 is around the best place. And I want to see if we can get this guy up even more. 98.7, maybe 0 0.01 uh, regularization strength. And that brought it up more, 0.001. We're just getting, the lower this gets, the closer it becomes to regular linear regression. So, oh, but we actually have a little bit better with just a little bit of regularization. And that brought it back down, so 0.001 looks best. And I wonder if we can even adjust this one further, 1.5. This is 93365, or if we do 1.9, 93384, so we're getting better. Maybe get this to 3.0, see what we get. 992, no. 2.0. 9932, no. 1.5 uh, again. Okay, so 1.8. I'm just trying to maximize this. Uh, we, could, we could definitely do a grid search or something to try to find the best values for this, but I'm not taking it too seriously here. Uh, you know, I'll keep it around 1.5. This is giving us pretty decent results. I mean, this is very good, right? I wasn't expecting to be able to predict the rating of a serial so so well. Uh, it makes me wonder, maybe this rating is actually a function of the data rather than some uh, arbitrarily assigned value. Um, let me see. Possibly from consumer reports. Looks like they're not sure either. The original source can be found here. Serials. Ah, uh, it doesn't say much. All right. Well, uh, I guess that sums up today's video. Um, if you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell and leave any comments in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.